Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Teddy. It's a Shutter original film and it's coming Thursday, August 5th to Shutter. And since that's the case, this is a no spoiler review. My synopsis is going to be very vague, but I'm sure that if you've seen the synopsis that Shutter's put out, then you know probably what this film is going to be. It's not a new concept. It's actually a very old concept for a film like this, but it's how they do it. It's their own kind of twist. It's their own take. And it's about the journey to get there, really, more than it is about this core story, in my opinion. And this is a film I would definitely recommend seeing. I will throw out uh, up front, it's a French film, so it is subtitled. So I would say, you know, if you have trouble with subtitles, like legitimate ones where you get migraines or something like that, that's what my mother has, so she can't watch subtitle films. I understand that. Otherwise, if you don't have a situation like that or any legit reason that you can't watch subtitled films, watch, 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 watch. So anyway, that's my quick little rant. Written and directed by Ludovic uh, Bukerma and Zoran Bukerma. I believe they're probably related. Uh, the only other film they've done is Willy Wonder, or I think it might be supposed to be Wonder. It's the number one and then ER at the end. Uh, like I said, it's a French film. It actually was a Cannes Film Festival selection. Now, some people say Cannes Film Festival. I believe it's technically Cannes Film Festival, but that should tell you the quality of this. And it's interesting because it's a Shutter original film, so I would assume that it probably is relatively low budget, and it does present in certain ways like it is low budget, although the look of it is phenomenal. It is visually stunning, excellent, directing, cinematography, the colors on this pop, the editing is wonderful, the camera work is excellent. T from a technical standpoint, there's so much great stuff here. It's an interesting story. Like I said, it's an old story done in a little bit of a different way. Um, there's no huge wow factor to it for that reason, but there is a bit of a payoff at the end. It's a nice ending, and uh, it's, it's a nice film. I, I definitely enjoyed it. And like I said, it's about the journey getting there, and it's about more than anything for me, the visuals on this. It looks stunning in so many ways, and I am all about films like that, especially when they have, like, actual substance to them. So synopsis, basically, it's about this kid named Teddy who's an outcast. He's not in school anymore, anymore or anything. He doesn't have parents. He's living kind of with this guy. I don't know if they ever really tell you what their relationship really is, like how they're related, if they even are related. It seems like aunt and uncle, maybe. Uh, that he's living with, and um, he's an outcast. You know, he he's he doesn't relate to many people, and it's kind of about that. So at the core, it's really this film is about ostracization. Ostracization is that even a word? Being ostracized within society, especially when you're younger. Uh, you know, choosing to live your life a certain way, and then because of that, kind of being alone, and the way that everyone looks at you, and the way that you kind of feel forced out of every circle that's there of friends and societally and all that jazz. Uh, it has an opening scene that grabs you a little bit, followed by some light and slightly humorous stuff. And there is like this undertone of like a humor throughout the entire film, kind of mixed with this quirkiness as well, because a lot of the characters are actually very eccentric. They're not um, deadpan, straight up characters. And also like the, the way the film is shot has this kind of interesting, askew, quirky style to it. So it, that all kind of rolls around. Think something maybe like a um, Wes Anderson type film, you know, something like Bottle Rocket or The Royal Tenenbaums or something. Like, it, it has a style that has this quirkiness, that has this undertone of a humor, even though the humor is not, like, outright funny, if that makes any sense. Just saying. Uh, like I said, I, I, I need to beat this to death, though. It looks excellent. The film is excellent. Directing, cinematography, it looks phenomenal. The There are a lot of really good scene cuts. Now, I don't bring that up a whole lot just because scene cuts are pretty basic things typically. But in this film, you really notice how interesting the scene cuts are. And what I mean by that is where they choose to end a scene and where they choose to start a scene. And it's just interesting. A lot of these shots and how they choose to end and start scenes are just very visually appealing, very interesting. I love this film from a visual standpoint. 
The colors in this film pop so well. Wonderful use of colors, and it, it adds to the overall amazing aesthetic of it. Uh, the film is overall very quirky, and like I said, you know, eccentric. And it's there's kind of a it's written as kind of a mix of like a humor and mystery and a little bit of horror twisted into it. Does that sound good? It is. Really good acting in this film, too. The actors all brought their A-game. Great job on that. Uh, they do wait quite a while to really get things going in this film, but you don't really end up mind minding because the characters and the style of the film are so compelling. You do, even though it is kind of slow, you feel so immersed in the world that's created there from a visual standpoint, but also you care about the characters. You're interested in the characters. You want to see what they're going to do next and what they're going to say next because they are compelling on screen. They demand your attention. And that speaks to the writing, to the technical aspects of the filmmaking, and to the actual acting itself. So, really well done. With the final big scene of this film, there's a lot that's done off screen, unfortunately, for a lot of people. And for that reason, is that's one of the reasons I was saying I think it probably was a pretty low-budget film. So certain things they can't do, they give you a little bit of what you're really looking for for the whole film in the end, but they do more of an off-screen type thing for the big end scene, and then they show you the aftermath. And the aftermath has impact, so don't write it off based off that. You'll get some payoff. It'll be enough. I mean, it was enough for me. Maybe it won't be enough for you, but for me, it was fine. Pretty good ending, like I said. Decent, decent, decent. Uh, once I, once again, I said it's not anything new, but it is quite interesting. Uh, the last thing I want to point out, this is just kind of like an Easter eggy type thing. You don't see the back of the shirt of the main character, Teddy, until about an hour and 19 minutes into the film. And the film is like, with credits, an hour and 28 minutes. Uh... You don't it, it, at about the hour and nineteen minute mark. You see the back of his shirt finally. Easter egg. Pay attention to that. I it was a cool kind of moment for me. I was just like, oh, that's cool. Uh, it's not anything like super important to the film or anything. It's just like a little Easter eggy type thing, which I found I found kind of funny and fun. So anyway, that's my feeling on Teddy. Like I said, you should check this film out. It is a good film. I didn't really have like a ton to say about it, especially from a story standpoint, because it's really just kind of, in the in a good way, meandering story about this dude, Teddy, and his life. And you really are interested in what's going on with it. It's it's interesting. It's super interesting. It's It's a character piece. I don't know if people like character pieces or not, but I definitely recommend this film. This isn't like the most amazing film I've seen or anything, but obviously for the uh, the visual standpoint of it, so good. Um, so out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid three and a half star rating. The only, I thought be, thought between going three and a half and four, so if I did quarters, I'd do 3.75, but I didn't go with the four just because I do think they could have done more with the story, made it a little bit more compelling story-wise, but it was still pretty good. Three and a half stars. Well, yeah, three and a half feels right. <laughs> I was about to just switch it right there and say four, but that just points out how in between I am between the three and a half and four. But you get the point. It's a good film. Check it out. Tell people to check it out if you have friends who you want to recommend good stuff to. And put some comments down here when you see it. Um, you can go ahead and put spoilers down there too. We can talk spoilers, no problem. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in between on it? Would love to hear your opinions. And also, oh, excuse me. Also, do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe button for me. If you're not a subscriber, well, first of all, if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. If you're not, please consider becoming one. It costs you no money. It's literally painless and takes one second to do. And it motivates me to keep this channel going and keep these reviews going and my unboxings and all that other stuff I do. Which points takes me to another, th another thing. Hit the uh, notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up all these different videos. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. It does mean a lot. And until next time, keep it brutal.